Mary Meat, which is, let's talk about hunger. And I'm not just talking about mild tummy rumblings, but real insatiable hunger. If that sounds like you, you might need a snack, or you might just be a critter. And if you are, I'm not judging. The krites are delightful little furballs with glowing red eyes and roofy quills that shoot out of their backs. The venom in these quills is what they make night quill out of. How else do you explain the name? These little monsters are like tribbles with fangs. They're also the stars of a brand new series streaming exclusively on Shudder. I'm your ghoul gory B movie, and tonight's gruesome TV review is Critters. A New Binge. Critters A New Binge is an eight-part series by the guys that brought us that damn Zombievers movie in 2014. Jordan Rubin directed the series and wrote it with the help of the Kaplan brothers who also composed the score. The tone of the Critters series is very much like Zombievers. It's playful, it's raunchy, and very tongue-in-cheek. Starring in this puppy, we have Joey Morgan, whom you might remember from the hilarious and criminally underrated Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. He plays Chris, a high school student struggling with unrequited love and being raised without a father. He does have his mother Veronica, played by Kirsten Robeck, but she's too busy hooking up with a delivery guy to really be there for Chris. It looks like he'll have to rely on his uncle Murray, played by Gilbert Godfrey, to help him navigate adolescence. How was uh, school today? Did you get late? Or maybe not. But let's talk about the real stars of the show, the Critters. We last saw the Critters in 1992 in Critters 4. Yeah, that's the one in space, but the Critters get a pass on that horror cliche because they're aliens. In the opening scene of the series, we see them on the bridge of their spaceship watching cheesy monster flicks and thus boldly going where only we B-movie fans dare to go. For those of you unfamiliar with the Critters movies, let me get you up to speed. The Critters are a race of ravenous furry monsters that were held in an asteroid prison in the 80s. These are dangerous criminals. I imagine that their life in prison was like something out of Oz or Orange is the New Black because the Krites are hard knock. At the start of the first film, they hijack a ship and escape to Earth. Well, the warden isn't about to let them get away, so he dispatches two shape-shifting bounty hunters to find the Krites and bring them to justice. It's exactly like that movie The Fugitive, only there's a bunch of Richard Kimballs and they eat people. I'm surprised Tommy Lee Jones didn't play one of the bounty hunters. You might argue that Tommy Lee Jones wouldn't stoop to doing a Critters movie, but you'd be wrong. He wasn't too good to star in and produce Man of the House. Plus, the Critters movies have starred some very big names like Dee Wallace, Billy Zane, Brad Dourif, Angela Bassett, Lynn Shay, and Oscar-winning Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, I am a little disappointed that none of the cast or crew from the movies returned for the series. I would have loved to see Don Keith Opper, who played Charlie, the town drunk turned bounty hunter from every single Critters movie, reprise his role. Charlie is the hero of the franchise. He is to Kreitz what Ripley is to Xenomorphs. A couple of other familiar faces I would have liked to see are Terrence Mann, who played the bounty hunter Ugg throughout the franchise, and Scott Grimes, who played Brad Brown in Critters 1 and 2. With a few exceptions, I didn't really care for the human characters in the series. Chris and his family are entertaining, but I could have done without the stock high school characters. There's a subplot involving Chris's unrequited crush on a girl with a douchey boyfriend that didn't interest me at all. How great is that? Does your face hurt? My eyes hurt from looking at them. Chris also has a forgettable best friend who likewise is a poorly developed stereotypical character that the series could have done without. Yes. Yes. No? No. Thankfully, the main storyline focuses on the Krites, who are returning to Earth for the first time since the 80s to retrieve one of their own that was left behind. Now, all of the Krites that came to Earth in the first film were killed. They did leave behind some eggs, but they were destroyed by the fourth film, so I'm curious to know where the series fits in with the movie's timeline. My guess is that a few of the Krites from the first movie somehow got away. The Krites are led by their president, voiced by Stephen Merchant. He tells his crew that this is a rescue mission only, no eating, but he does little to enforce that rule. But I don't hold that against him. If he were to run for president of the United States, he'd still get my vote. Maybe it's the suit and tie, but he displays an air of confidence that you just don't find in most alien candidates. Ah, oh, yes, 
I see it's turning you on. The main Krite crew each have distinguishing characteristics, similar to what we saw with the Gremlins in Gremlins 2. There's a doctor critter, a space pirate critter, even a lady critter. The Krites have never looked better. They still look like 80s movie monsters, but they're more expressive than the puppets from the films created by the Chiobo brothers. Whereas many of the puppets from the movies were hand puppets with limited animatronics, the new critters are fully animatronic and puppeteered remotely and with rods. I'm glad the series stuck with puppets and didn't go the CGI route with the critters. Say what you will about puppets, but to me they almost always look more real than CGI monsters, especially CGI monsters on a budget. This new batch of critters talk a lot more than their movie counterparts. The critter president even has a translation device that allows him to speak English. You just what? Looking at me, you're undressing me with those eyes. You look hot, see me. Now the critters have always been funny, but these critters have really stepped up their comedy game. This is also the goriest critters installment. There are loads of dead humans, animals, and critters. There's a handectomy, a penectomy, and a return of the massive critter ball of destruction from Critters 2. Adding to the carnage is a new red breed of critter that shoots quills that make people explode. We also get critters exploding into puddles of green goo and a massive dusting that reminded me of the Thanos snap from Avengers Infinity War. The practical effects and puppetry are impressive. They've certainly evolved past what we saw in the films. There are some cheesy low budget green screen and makeup effects that look like something out of Power Rangers, but they fit the tone of the show and the overall look of the franchise. The biggest point of contention though for Critters fans will be the plot twist that turns up in the sixth episode. I won't spoil anything, but any of you who have seen the show know what I'm talking about. It's bizarre, but I for one loved it. It's true to the spirit of Critters, which has always pushed the boundaries of weird, and it opens up the series to new possibilities and takes the franchise in a fun and inventive new direction. I'm sure whatever it is, I, I can handle it. For me, the biggest drawback of the series is the episode length. There are eight episodes in the series, and they're all about 10 minutes long, and that includes about a minute of credits. If you're binging the series like I did, the episodes seem to end abruptly, and the credits start to feel long and repetitive. If you ask me, the entire series should have been a one or two part pilot episode. They could have also made the episodes longer to better develop the high school characters and the bounty hunters. Two of the bounty hunters are stuck in Australia for most of the series and only make brief appearances until the end. So should you see it? Critters and New Binge is good gory fun, and I for one was left hungry for more. This series does end on a cliffhanger, so a second season is certainly a possibility. If you have Shudder, this series is one to binge, and if you're a Critters fan and you don't have Shudder, sign up for their 30-day free trial. That way you can check out this series and all the other horrific movies and shows they have, like my personal favorite, The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. Well, that's it for me, witches. If you like this video, please hack that thumbs up button. And for more gory goodness, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. And until we meet again, blessed be.